advice your fellow eco Students should work on behalf of Eco Global International World Goal. Extend a warm welcome to you all. On this beautiful occasion of celebrating Indian traditional art form at Eco Global Tonight, it gives me immense pleasure to introduce you to Sekhi Mikhail. The Society of Indian Art Museum and Cultural Institute. Sekhi Mikhail is a non-profit voluntary organization dedicated to promoting and spreading awareness of culture in education throughout our country, India. For the past 44 years, Sekhi Mikhail has brought thousands of students closer. To various forms of Indian classical music, dance, folk art, craft, and folk theatre, in schools, colleges, that's and professional right. institutions through concerts, that's lecture demonstrations, and legendary performers. Uttarakhand chapter has been particularly active in conducting over 400 events across the state each year. Besides classical classical concerts, heritage walks, film classes, and workshops are held regularly in schools. Students are selected for national scholarships and national conventions each year. In 2009, the founder of Sikh Mikhail, Dr. Kiran Seth, was conferred with the Padma Shri. In 2011, the Rajiv Gandhi Sadhavna Award was given to the movement by the then Prime Minister, Dr. Manmohan Singh. This award was given to Sikh Mikhail for its contribution towards the promotion of harmony, fostering enmity and understanding amongst the masses, particularly, particularly the youth through classical music and other aspects of our composite heritage. The movement stands on the shoulder of its volunteers who work selflessly in organizing the program, as they realize the importance of saving the country's cultural heritage. We extend a warm welcome to the Sikhmikay team and also thank them in abundance for continuing their strong bond with equal even amidst the pandemic. We welcome you, Team Sikhmikay. Now, I would request my fellow compare of the evening, Ms. Mehek, to kindly introduce our honorable performer for tonight, Ms. Marthi Vakkarji. Good evening, everyone. Madhvi Ji is one of the leading Odissi dancers of our country. She has been awarded the Padmashri by the Government of India for Odissi dance. Her father was Padmashri Pandit Vinay Chandra Mukhalya Ji, the founder of Gandharva Mahavidyalaya one of the most famous dance schools for Hindustani music and classical dance in New Delhi. She inherited a deep love towards art and dance from her family and under the intense guidance of her guru, Sri Hari Krishna Dehra Ji. The world soon came to know about her extraordinary skills. She gave her first public performance at the tender age of four years. Initially, she learned Bharatnatyam and Katha, but finally she chose Odissi as a medium of expression. She later learned Odissi from the legendary Guru Kenucharan Mohapatra Ji. For her contribution to the art, Madhuri Mudgal Ji has won numerous awards, including the Sanskriti Award 1984, President of India's Award of Padmasri 1990, Sangeet Mata Academy Award 1996, and Express Suramani 2004, and performed at dance festivals throughout the world that includes the Agenda International Festival in UK, Festival of India in USA, Reina Dance Festival Austria, Festival of Indian Dance South Africa, Brazil, Hungary, London, the Avangon Festival France, Mexico, Berlin, and Italy, Spain, Malaysia, Malaysia, Japan, and the Indian subcontinent. Ma'am, thank you so much for being famous enough to be among us tonight. Before we start with the performance, we would like to request Madam Mutka to speak a few words about the upcoming performance. I'm sure Ma'am has some details about the performance that she would want to share with the audience. Namaskar friends. I'm delighted to be, to be with all of you this evening and to have this great opportunity of sharing my dance with all of you. As you all know that Odissi is one of our classical dance styles. And by classical, we mean, of course, that which is traditional, but which has evolved over a long period of time and some a technique which follows a certain set of rules and regulations. And therefore, you have different dance styles with different sets of rules, Bharatanatyam, Kathak, Odissi, Manipuri, Kathakal. And uh, Odissi is, uh, as you all know, from the state of Odisha, southeastern India. And uh, it's a very sculptural dance form because the basic body positions of uh, Odissi uh, take from the Shilpa, 
from the sculptures of Odisha, Shilpa Shastra. So you see that a lot of body bends that are used in Odissi come from the Shilpa Shastra, the iconic, uh, the concept of icon making in Odisha. Ma'am, in your performance, along with the great body posture, my heart gets a beat looking at your marvelous expression. This is the result of years of dedication and devotion towards dancing. With this, we would now like to open the questioning hour when the students may ask the questions they have after witnessing this amazing performance by ma'am. In lieu of the same, I would first like to call upon Gaurish Shah to ask a question to ma'am. Good evening, ma'am. I, Gaurish Shah Jain of grade seven, would like to ask you this question. What yes. was the privilege and this difficulty in being the disciple of a great mentor like Guru Kilu Charan Mohapatra and having the legendary artist like Padma Shri Pandit Vinay Chandra Mudgalya as your father? Well, I would say it was a privilege and a great uh, I mean, highly lucky I was to be born into a family like mine because I had all the sanskars from my family. And we had great musicians visiting us and seeing them, seeing how uh, simple they were, seeing how they, they had no absolutely no ego, uh, living with them, talking to them, and being a disciple of a great teacher like Guru, like Guru Kelshar Mahapatra has been the biggest boon in my life. Because without them, without their showing me the path, I would have never been where I am today at all. So it was a great honor. It was not scary, if I can say that. It was only uh, a plus point to have these two great people in my life. Yes. I can't hear you well. Can you just bring the mic very close to you, please? Ma'am, the mic has been moved to the second participant who wants to ask you the question. Just give us a second. Good yeah, evening, no ma'am. I am Keith and Keith Alamad of grade 7. I have this question for you. As an individual and as an artist, which is the most remarkable moment in your life and what makes it so special? What is a great moment in my life? Is that the question? Uh, the remarkable moment in your life. A remarkable moment in my life. Well, there have been a few and uh, it's a very difficult to point out one. Uh, but, uh, you know, when you perform for people you don't know at all, and when, uh, you know, one old man comes up to you and says that it has been, uh, you know, the dance has brought him such joy, uh, you know, that kind of uh, response is really a remarkable feeling that I have. And also one remarkable moment was, I mean, dancing for great personalities, Obama and all, it, all this does not really make it remarkable. What makes it remarkable is the response uh, that our dance can generate, our Indian classical tradition. It's not Madhvi Muddal at that moment. It's the, it's the dance. It's purely the art that uh, conveys to them. So many remarkable moments in the sense that uh, when you touch the hearts of people i think those are remarkable moments yes does that answer your question Good evening, ma'am. Um, 
I'm Manasvi Nahada of Grade 8, and I would like to ask you, what made you choose dance as your career? And did your family support your decision? Was it easy uh, to convince your family? And uh, as the uh, as you have uh, artistic inheritance, being a part of a legendary family, um, or is it difficult? Or was it well, difficult uh, like it would have been for any other child? Well, I would say that I, being a part of the family that I was made it uh, easier for me. But, you know, I'll, let me tell you that I was studying architecture. I was a, a student of School of Planning and Architecture in Delhi, the, I think one of the best schools of architecture in India. And it was difficult to even get admission there. But I was a student and I would easily have been an architect instead of a dancer. But I was pursuing the study of both and I realized in my fourth year in architecture that I had to choose one because both the uh, studies demanded a lot of work, a lot of practice, a lot of devotion. So I chose dance, but it was still a difficult decision to not pursue architecture. So it's, of course, I had the advantage of uh, having a background in music to have a greater insight into dance, but um, still it was not easy. And my parents thought that I should complete my architecture, but I didn't. I just decided to do my dance. Thank you, Mom. Thank you, Mom. Thank you, ma'am. Now I would like to call upon Anna Mishra to ask a question. Yes. Good evening, madam. I'm Anna Mishra from grade 11. And my question for you is, was dance something that you wanted to pursue or was it your responsibility to follow the legacy of your family? Not at all. My parents, you know, it is so strange that they were both uh, musicians and uh, I was born into, I was surrounded by music and dance because my father had founded this institute uh, in Delhi and there were music and dance classes all around me. So they never even forced me to learn either music or dance. I just learned it on my own. And it was even when I was learning, it was not like I had to become a dancer because I enjoyed dancing so much that I learned. And even till a point when I was dancing on stage, it was not that I would be a professional dancer, professional dancer like that. I just wanted to dance, so I uh, danced. So it was not because it was legacy. I was, there was absolutely no pressure. In fact, it was the opposite way to, to continue this, uh, but it just happened. Thank you, ma'am. With this, now I would like to call upon Anika to ask the question. I don't hear this. Good evening, ma'am. I'm Anika Baderia from uh, 10A. Uh, it's a pleasure to share this with you. I've been learning Kathak for almost 10 years now. Oh, and what made me pursue this dance form was the fact that it helps me express myself in the most meticulous and detailed manner. So similarly, what inclined you to choose Urisi? Well, uh, I love Kathak too, and I was doing Kathak also for a very long time. Because as a child, when I started learning, there was no Odissi at all. You know, uh, in the, I was, uh, I started when I was four or five, and uh, in the 50s, mid 50s, late 50s, 60s, even, there was no Odissi. So we had only Odissi, uh, Kathak and Bharatanatyam, and I learned both. And when I saw Odissi, I decided to do Odissi because, in fact, at one point I was doing both Odissi and Kathak, but uh, um, Odissi somehow suited, as you said, my inner uh, call. It, it, it suited my personality. It, it suited what I wanted to express through it. Uh, Therefore, I, I choose because I think it's a very lyrical form. It's a very understated form. It's a very 
delicate form and that's why I wanted to uh, do this. But Kathak is also very beautiful and I'm so glad that 10 years you're learning it so sincerely and with the very best to you for the future. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. I would like to call upon Eva. Good evening, ma'am. My question, I'm Eva Dukar, and my question for you is, having dance and art as a career, have you ever felt low or distracted? And how did you deal with that moment? And at that moment, did you consider switching your career? Well, dancing is not at all as a career is, is very, very difficult, you know, because it is dependent on many, you need your musicians, you, like painting, if you have your paints and you're alone, you can dance. Writing, you can just sit and write. Singing too, you can, you know, at least practice on your own. But dance, you need musicians, you need other people. So it was not such an easy choice, and especially Odissi, because in Delhi, there were no musicians. I have born and brought up in Delhi. Uh, there were no uh, Odissi musicians as such. So training musicians for Odissi, myself, getting, you know, Pakhavaj player from Odisha, and, uh, you know, pursuing the form. Sometimes dance can get... Uh, you know, sometimes you really think, oh, it's so difficult. You just don't want to do it. But it brings you so much joy that you still, despite all the problems and uh, difficulties, but difficulties are a part of life. Any career, I would imagine, would have difficulties, would have these obstacles uh, in their uh, uh, pursu pursuing of that career. So dance is not special, but... Yes, it has more difficulties than I would say other dance, other art forms. Right? Yeah. I'm not getting everybody's name, so I can't even address you with your name. You know, you should hold the mic like this, not like this, so that it's clearer, the sound. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Thank you so much, ma'am, for sharing with you the dreams of your life. Now, I would like to call upon Fiona to extend her word of thanks. Thank you, everyone. Bless the honor of Adi Mudhiji, principal ma'am, teachers, and my dear friends. On behalf of the Cool Global International Girls School, I extend our heartfelt gratitude to our chief guest, Padi Mudhiji ma'am who were generous enough to spare time out of her busy schedule to grace this evening with her presence. Along with witnessing a spectacular performance, our hearts felt overwhelmed to hear, to hear your answers to the questions raised by my friends and fellow mates. Ma'am, your ideas and thoughts will be a great source of motivation for all of us. We thank, we thank the Spikmaker team to continue this collaboration with the Cold Global International Girls School and hope to cherish this point for long. I thank each and every individual who connected to make this event a success. Thank you so much. Good night. Thank you. Now I would like to request Principal Ma'am to address the gathering. Everyone. Um, good evening, Madhvi Munkulji, Abhishek. Uh, Ma'am, before I start my words of praise for you, I have a question for the girls. Only for the girls, not for the teachers. Can someone tell me the full form of Spik That's my question. Yeah. We've had Spik performances here in school before this as well. So what is Spik Any guesses? Yes? Loudly. Dancers and classical dancers. Okay, you got the gist of it. It's Society for the Promotion of Indian Classical Music and Culture Amongst Youth. 
and uh, I think it's just been phenomenal because uh, Mahathir ma'am, I remember when I was in school, that's when stigma care had just started. And uh, of course, as children, we would often, you know, uh, feel that why are we being made to sit in an auditorium? Okay. And I'm not interested in Indian classical music. Why should I sit and listen to um, a flute recital? Or I'm not into dance. So why should I watch a dance performance? But you might not realize it at this point of time. But this is really a promotion of culture and music amongst youth because it's not just dance per se, but through dance, through music, you are developing an aesthetic sense. You learn so much about mythology. You learn so much about history. You learn grace. You learn movement. You learn balance. And in this, uh, in the world of today, a lot of children can just rattle off names, Justin Bieber, Ariana Grande, and I think that's wonderful. But at the same time, an organization like this helps you to get exposure to uh, dance forms, musical forms of India, which otherwise you might not have an opportunity to get exposure to. And I've seen that happen with my generation in school because we learned our dance and music. I was a student of Kathak too for a couple of years. But the kind of exposure we got through stigma is something that stays in the subconscious and it develops your aesthetic sense, it develops a sense of pride, and you just never know when you might yourself choose to take up one of these art forms as a hobby, as a passion. Uh, the pandemic, of course, has changed a lot of things for us and we are saddened by it. I wish we could have had a live performance here and have you with us, ma'am, because that would have been absolutely electrifying. But at the same time, my heart is also full of gratitude because technology at least has enabled us to have this. And though we move more and more towards technology, it is the fine arts that keep us rooted as human beings and don't convert us into robotic machines. It is the fine arts that develop in us feeling, a feeling, a compassion, empathy, kindness, appreciation for the good things in life, for the right things in life. So even though we are not really, really together, I'm really glad that we could have you here with us, Pam. And like you said, that one of your most remarkable moments was that somebody told you that his heart was filled with joy. I can say without a doubt that our hearts are filled with joy today, watching your wonderful performance. And I hope in the future to have you with us in school so that we can have a greater interaction and we get to learn so much, so much more from you. You also said a very important thing when you answered one of the questions. You said that you did dance because you enjoyed it. And I think that's what we as teachers always keep trying to tell our children, do something that you enjoy, that you have a passion for, and you're definitely going to succeed. Follow your passion, enjoy it every day. The hard work is not even going to feel like hard work. And I think ma'am put it really, really beautifully. So a very big thank you from all of us at school, ma'am, for you being here. And thank you so much, Abhishek, for doing this for us, though virtually. But I hope, uh, I, I, I'm an optimist. I think the worst is behind us. And very soon, we are all going to be together again. I'd also like to thank the teacher in charges for this program, Ms. Spartha and Mr. Pansha, who work very hard, the IT department, because technology can let you down any minute. But they still pulled it through. So thank you so much. Namaste. With this, we have come to an end of this beautiful evening, not only learning details of one of the most beautiful Indian dancers by Miss Pro Marmur Mudkar, but also knowing about her life and experiences. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed presenting it to you. Thank you, everyone. Good night.